Hello everyone, welcome to this Video Some Frontier video. My name is Jay Wakefield and today I thought it would be a good idea for me to um, try and tidy up the vintage computer corner a wee bit. Some of you will know I've actually had it, um, I've actually basically been using um, the slot where the Dell Dimension 4600 would normally be to work on the HP Kayak, the Mesh, and the Franken Advent machines. Um, and I've also actually been working on the AT Custom Built, which I'm planning to actually use as my main 486 machine. Still a couple of bits need done with it, but um, hopefully, you know, those should get done pretty soonish, and yeah. Should all it shall be it should all be good. Now, um, the Packard Bell. What I've done is I've uh, stored it away somewhere. I'm not planning to get rid of it. You know, I am planning to keep it uh, because you know it's a good machine. I really do like it, but I feel that the AT Custom Bell at the moment kind of serves my needs better in a four eighty six than what the Packard Bell does. But, um, you know, I do like it, so I'm going to keep a hold of it. Now, I am going to be tidying this corner up. But before I actually um, went with putting all the machines back in, I've been thinking about the Dell Dimension 4600. Now, there's an upgrade that I've been planning for a while to do with this machine. And now I think it's the right time to be able to do it. I'll just kind of carefully see if I can pan here. I'm sorry about that uh, We smudge on the case there. Um, that's... Hopefully that, that'll be... Um, hopefully that will be removable. Um, but with this machine... I've quite fancied the idea of adding a Creative Labs Sound Blaster Live card to it. Now, I've not been able to actually do this at the moment um, because the machine has a PCI wireless card installed. But now that I've actually started um, using Ethernet, I've actually managed to install um, an Ethernet hub in the retro computer corner. Um, hopefully that, um, that shouldn't actually, uh, matter anymore. I shouldn't need the PCI wireless card. So, with that in mind, what I plan to do here is remove it, and then it's place install the Creative Lab sound card. Without further ado, <clears throat> please excuse me there, let's get started on the upgrade process. Now, here's the card I'm away to use. It's um, a sound black. It's a, I do believe it's a value edition of the card. Uh, sound Blaster Live, but it's still pretty good. Uh, it's got uh, 5.1, or is it 4.1? I don't know. Uh, 5.1 or 4.1 surround sound, which we'll never use. No doubt. Whoops. Um, it has... Um, I think it's actually 4.1, if I'm honest. Um, it also has um, a game port, which is nice if I wanted to use a legacy joystick with this machine. And it's got amazing sounding MIDI. So, I'm just going to move this camera out the road and we can get started. Um, so, just gonna move the AT custom belt a little bit there. Now, what we need to do now is to remove the side of the machine. I'm just gonna drop the sound card on there. Right. <clears throat> Gonna remove the side slightly off of the edge of the table, I think. Um... 
Actually, you know what I think I'll do? I'll lay the system down on its side, because really I need the system to be on its side anyway. Um, made that mistake when installing a PCI card in the 2001 custom belt for the first time. I tried installing it while the machine was still upright, and then I was like, why is it not detecting it? So, give me a moment and I'll readjust the camera angle. Okay, so now the system is on its side, and um, I've been able to get the cover off quite easily there. Now, what I want to do is uh, grab my Stanley screwdriver, and I will use the um, I'll use the uh, Phillips screw head with the longer shaft. Now. <clears throat> sound card is somewhere in the middle um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to unplug the lining cable uh, from the back of the onboard sound card and I'm also going to remove the wireless antenna here we go I'm trying to keep that wireless card safe because I have a feeling it'll probably come in handy elsewhere never really quite know with these things um, so this machine is of a micro ATX persuasion, it has uh, four expansion cards installed, an NVIDIA GeForce FX 5200 graphics card, a, let's see if I can actually better the angle even more, it has, um, an NVIDIA GeForce FX 5200, please excuse me, this has taken a wee while. Um, it has the Belkin wireless card installed. Very, very, very tiny expansion card. It has um, a Firewire card installed and the Pinnacle PC TV stereo TV tuner card. Now, going to try and lift this card out. Managed to do it just by pushing up on the um, output where the antenna goes and the edge of the card. So that's that card out of the road. Now let's add the new card. So Sound Blaster Live. What we want to do is just kind of move this blue cable out of the way and if I can actually show you the expansion slot you see yep that um that white slot is the uh, pci slot which the sound card will go into so basically it's just now a case of okay we're back and i sort of have the systems kind of uh, set up um, although I am going to have to do extensive work on getting the wiring organised. Properly extensive stuff. Okay guys. Let's see if the Delta Dimension 4600 works. Well, booting up. Posting. Actually, I've just thought of something. You gotta adjust the bios, don't you? <laughs> yeah. Disable the onboard audio. Hold on. So now we are in the BIOS. So what I want to do now is disable the onboard audio. So I'm gonna scroll down to integrated devices, like you see select option. And I want to turn sound off. Press the spacebar, uh, press enter, press escape, and then save changes and exit. So, antivirus might be out of date. 
And now we're actually seeing the Add New Hardware Wizard. Now I don't know if any drivers exist for this in Windows or on the internet or what have you. Um, <clears throat> chances are if Microsoft has its own drivers for this sound card, I won't want to use them. Um, mainly because I want the I want the Creative MIDI. Seriously. So what I'm actually going to do... Yep, go back. And then I will get the drivers up. Right, so now I have the um, sound card drivers extracted. Um, basically what I'm going to do is... Whoopsie. I'm just going to install from the CD. Um, oh yeah, and also I was um, I was actually uh, going to have a look at um, and I'll see whether the FireWire card's installed because I don't have Zoom text up at this very moment. I really can't see what's going on down there, but I know the system's working. Right, okay, well the Firewire doesn't seem to have... I did move the Firewire card, so it might need some time to install. Right. So, yeah, Windows XP kind of needs it some time to sort itself out. Um, so while it's actually doing that, let's let's go about uninstalling. Before I actually install the sound card drivers, um, I think we should actually uninstall the software for devices that um, are no longer used on this machine. Um, <clears throat> so the first one to uninstall, literally because it comes before the second one in the alphabet, is the uh, Belkin wireless card. And then the SoundMax audio will be uninstalled. And I'm only doing it alphabetically because <laughs> Belkin one will be right there when this eventually loads. And I know that some people like, you know, some people will say, oh, take the devices out and then maybe start the computer and then put the new devices in and then maybe restart again. <laughs> Um, but the way I've done it, yeah, so now the machine's suffering, it's like, wait, 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 wait a minute here! Right. There we go, Belkin uh, 802.11G wireless card. That's now being uninstalled. And now for the SoundMax audio. And then I'll probably I'll probably use C Cleaner to go all over this, you know, once everything's been set up as well. So this is just 
just kind of taking its time at the moment. Oh, now the same Max uh, uninstaller program is kind of in gridlock. Don't you just love it when uninstallers work as they're meant to do? Okay, so now I've just restarted the machine. Um, <clears throat> I tried to have a look at the event log in the BIOS to see if, if it could tell me, you know, cards that have been added or removed, but it doesn't. Which is a shame. But um, here we are once again. Where it's uh, going about trying to detect USB devices. Let's have a look. Unknown device. Right, it's probably not a good thing. But it's on the USB bus. So that's okay. So it means I can just unplug it. Probably the Bluetooth adapter actually. <coughs> it was only a cheap, nasty piece of crap that I bought out of uh, Pound Shop anyway. <laughs> Oh, wait, no. <laughs> Seriously. It's actually asked for a signed driver for unknown device. Ah, James. I give up. Right. Let's see if I can actually reach down. Yes, I can. Um, thereabouts. Oh. Can't get. Can't properly grip this. There we go. Right, I've unplugged it. Now I literally just want to plug it back in. And I don't know what it's saying now. Oh yeah, Bluetooth radio. So, by unplugging the device and plugging it back in again, I managed to get it going, I think. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to let this install. These drivers have not been signed. Unless the signatures run out. <coughs> well, they became the uh, expired. Your new hardware is installed and ready to use. Right, good. Bluetooth is working. Still, what about the FireWire? So I'll tell you what I'll do, I'll be right back once I've installed the FireWire because I want that to work. Okay, so um, here we are. Um, I've The uh, FireWire card wasn't fully inserted into the PCI slot so um, I've just done that now and hopefully that will work. <sighs> I do like things to work properly. Um, you know, it's it's just kind of one of those things, caps in OCD. What the hell? Okay, that was a bit strange. Ugh. <sighs> 
but oh well, we're back into Windows now. So, you know, once I get to the desktop, I'll come back to you guys. Well, okay, this maybe isn't the desktop, but um, Windows is starting. Do, 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 do. Yeah, the sound's working. Now, hopefully what this will do is it will install the Firewire card and... Yep, it's doing that. Texas Instruments uh, th IEEE 1394 controller. <clears throat> I thought Windows had the drivers for this. But I know Windows has the drivers for this. It just does. Texas Instruments OHCI um, Complaint IEEE 1394 Host Controller. And then yeah, now we're back onto the sound card. And now if we actually look in device manager, hopefully we will see the IEEE 1394 bus host controllers and 1394 net adapter. Now, let's actually uh, install the uh, thing that we were supposed to install in this video. So, I'm just going to run set up here. So hopefully this does have XP drivers. I think it will. I want to do a full install. Don't need Adobe Acrobat Reader. Um, two speakers. No, I don't want to use a digital output. And away we go. So what we're doing now is we're just a way to install the software and all the drivers and all that good stuff. Okay. Right, so here we are. We're a way to install the um, Creative Labs Sound Blaster. I actually have some drivers. And this is an EMU10K1, so it's um, it is a cheap version of the card. <clears throat> but I mean, hey, it's still a good card. But I do still have vortexes as well. Okay. So now we're going to discuss why I'm an idiot. I've, I've actually decided to install and actually do a video journaling said installation of a sound card in the middle of the night. Yeah. When my neighbors are asleep. Brilliant idea. But we'll try not to wake them up. Um, what we're going to do, we're, we're going to play a couple samples, um, a MIDI, a wave, and, you know, just to kind of show how the sound card works. Turns out I kind of plugged the um, audio cable into the wrong, uh, into the wrong part. But um, that's it all set up now, you know, it's um, all working. And um, 
uh, hopefully line in marks as well. Um, we'll uh, probably test the VCR at some point. Now, let's play uh, the blue the blue Danube. Um, now this comes to you from the click and play CD. Um, and yeah, I'm trying to find the people who were responsible. Well, I can't do that. Word doesn't seem to like write files very much. Anyway, let's let's play the blue uh, blue Danube waltz. Um, if you are currently floating around in a spaceship, um, trying to catch floating potato uh, crisps then um, this song will be for you. Chomp, 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 chomp. Sorry about that, the uh, battery on my phone went dead. Um, so now it's actually the next day, it's uh, 10 to 12 on Monday, July the 6th. And, <clears throat> well, what we're going to do now is um, I'm going to play a sample of the Airhorn. Well, yeah, a wave sample of the Airhorn remix of uh, my theme tune. <laughs> so there we go, and now for the final part of this video, <clears throat> what I'm wanting to do is actually show you a piece of software that I love on these creative cards. The Audio HQ software, but more than that, the piano bit, it's like musical keys on GarageBand. Yeah, I had it set to bagpipe last night. Let's see.
anyway, um, that I think is going to conclude this video. I hope you have all enjoyed it. If you have, please feel free to subscribe, follow Videos on Frontier on Facebook, and follow me on Twitter. Um, I would also like to thank Billy Carr and Luke Miller for appearing in a part of this video. Wait, no, it's just Billy this time. Um, <clears throat> but uh, <clears throat> apart from that, thank you all for watching, and I hope you'll all join me for my next video. Cheerio, bye.